Your eyes don't play tricks on you. This isn't a modded run, not a cheat run. The bots carry medkits, including myself. And all the bots can carry one medkit. Thanks to a new update that get way past over my head and I didn't got notice, now you can give commands to the bots so they can carry the medkits, kill themselves or give you a medkit in case you don't have one. In this video, I'm going to share with you how this works, what buttons we should use, what other crazy things we can do until they patch them because actually there is a cheesy way you can have many more medkits than you should. It's not a cheat actually, it's a bypass to find medkits that you cannot reach yourself. The bots will go and reach them for you. But without any further delay, let's explain in a live recording how things work. Okay, we have reached our first medkits and as you can see, no matter how many times you ping it, the bots won't pick it up. They have actually added separate commands, you can see them in the settings, that you can use for the bots to perform certain actions. Let's see them. Now for resupply, in PC the default is G, and this will command the bot to, to say, go and pick up the medkit. The H will command the bots to heal themselves, as long as they carry medkit, and as long as they're missing a certain amount of health. And the four button you will say need a first aid kit, in case you don't carry any, one of the bots will run and give you a medkit. Let's see it live. I say G. Go and pick it up. And as you can see Marco, oh thank you very much, good. He picked it up, now he will carry it for the rest of the game. If he dies, the bot dies, they will drop it. One thing you can see, when we are in combat, the bots won't be able to pick up the medkit. I'm saying GGG, G, G, go pick it up guys, nope. but they won't, because we're in combat and they will prioritize killing the Zik instead of picking up the medkit. Don't be alarmed, you just have to wait, go outside of combat, the Zik stop coming, and eventually the bots, you see, will be able to pick it up. Perfect opportunity to demonstrate about the other medical supplies such as Adrenaline and Batage Gitch. I will just press GGG and say, guys, go pick it up. Please go pick it up. Pick it up. And as you can see, no, the bots won't pick it up. No matter how many times I press it, I have tested this multiple times. I go there beside uh, Batage Gitch or Adrenaline, go and say, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. They will not pick it up, never. So you have to pick up the other supplies yourselves and let the bots carry the medkit. This is actually insane because now, for example, we have the adrenaline and we also have a medkit just in case we need to heal ourselves or want the bots. And you also have just in case the adrenaline, which is very good for solo runs. Let's demonstrate how you can request the correct way a medkit from the bot and what happens. If you keep pressing the four button in case you don't have the medkit, you will just go help, help, get the medkit but you will not get one medkit. You have to press it once, as I did now. So as you saw, Daniela, after pressing it once, will give me a medkit. What happens if you have another healing item that's not a medkit? In case you have adrenaline, you simply drop the adrenaline and get the medkit. However, in case you have a bandage kit, something else will happen. Let's see what will happen. I press it one four, and this would happen. You have to place the bandage kit. And if you press it a second time, the four button, one of the bots will give you a medkit. So this is what will happen. You cannot pick it up once again because you have already placed it. So you have to be careful before you request a medkit in case you have the bandage kit. Otherwise, you will just waste it in the request of the medkit. Let's see how the healing of the bots actually works because once you press the command the H, they will start healing themselves when they're missing a certain amount of health. You cannot control which bot is going to heal themselves unless, for example, let's say Giovanni has lower HP. Now if I press H, Giovanni will only heal. In comparison, Daniela, although she has a medkit, she won't heal herself. However, if they're missing a, a certain amount of health or not. Let's see. Now Daniela only misses a very low amount of health. And I press H, we're out of combat. But it was the threshold that both of them healed. If Daniela were missing, I don't know, only this portion of health, I think they don't heal. They have to miss half or more than half of the first bar. That's what my test uh, saw. 
And that's a little difficult, so you can only use the heal probably in most effective way in case you want, let's say, two bots that are below 50% health to get the most value. Otherwise, if uh, one of the bots is the same damage as Daniela now, uh, you don't get so much value and you basically lose a medkit. The cool thing with uh, healing all the bots together is a uh, horde mode. Because now, for example, we go outside of combat and say, okay, everyone heal. And oh, the beauty. You don't spare the time for them to heal. And you can, for example, buy more supplies, press 3 times G, run away and go, come on guys, pick up the medkits and come. Look at this beauty. How, how much time we were just now, uh, you can save in horde mode. You can have the bandage kit when you get lucky and have three medkits auto heal all the bots and pick them up. It's just, it's just insane how much you can save. And this can open many possibilities for horde mode for solo. Because usually for the end game, we need time to heal the bots, heal ourselves, get medkits. But now, look at this. Other things I tried for the bots to pick up are uh, bridge charges, but they don't pick it up, unfortunately. Heavy weapons, secondary primary weapons, they don't pick up, they don't restock anything else apart from medkits. As far as I know, not even the other healing items, only and only medkits. Now let's demonstrate the insane part and how you can make the bots reach out medkits you shouldn't reach. You see a bridging door, usually 90% of the bridging doors are tried, they already have a medkit inside. So if we're outside the bridging door and we end out of combat, and say, G, go, go pick it, I make it. And we go a little further. You will see one of the bots will most likely remain there, Daniela. We go there, there, there. And we'll see that she will teleport inside after a point. Yeah, you see? And picked up a medkit, which is now a free medkit that she reached out inside the bridging door. How do you do that, Daniela? You're a wizard. And yeah, it gets back. So it doesn't bugged out. It just gives you free medkit. You can try it twice because there is a very small chance for the bridging door to have a second medkit. But this bridging door, for example, did have because Giovanni didn't teleport. So these were the major changes. They also fixed a couple of bugs where zombies are blinking and medium distances when the character select appears in T pose at the collection screen and another bug when the pose menu overlaps with cinematics. However, the major major changes are now that the bots are more self-sufficient, they can survive easier, they can help the solo players survive easier because they can give you the medkits, they can carry more medkits, so make things much easier, especially for horror mode. And this is very important because although horde mode is not as popular now, we're waiting by the end of September probably the horde mode Excel. This will be an Excel horde mode and solo players now will have more opportunities to run it more smoother. Otherwise, it could be more challenging since horde mode is already challenging for solo and I can imagine horde mode Excel being even more challenging. So with these changes for now, it will help a lot to survivability for the bots and the player and make some differences. To just revitalize a little bit some solo players because although the community is active and you can find a lot of games, sometimes you can you just want to run solo for some missions, some horde mode, some XP farming, experiment for yourself. So this makes things much easier for higher difficulties. I would probably think how they can break the game in case, for example, the bots can pick up tier 3 weapons, pick up heavy weapons, give them to you later, not use them because using them could be a little difficult for friendly fire abusing heavy weapons, but even if they carry the heavy weapons for you, this can also change the game dramatically. But for now I don't want to just rush through too many changes. So far I'm happy with the, what the bots can do, they cannot pick up the other healing supplies so you have the opportunity to for example carry adrenaline and medkit which was a major problem for solo players but now you have the opportunity to revive yourself or heal yourself but only outside combat, that's the only downside but you don't care. Before we close the video I also have to mention that I'm a little happy that circumstances allowed me to postpone a little bit the how to solo extreme because now with this change we can actually make things much easier for new players to solo extreme difficulties 
thanks to the extra healing items the bots can carry or healing themselves. So yeah, this can be much easier, much doable. And especially another thing I learned, you can use certain mutators to unlock the Wakishashi and also the sniper. So we're going to do how to solo using mutators and using also the new mechanics with the healing and to make things much, much easier for us. And we reached the end of the video. I really hope this can help you to understand how the new mechanics for the healing of the bots work. So thank you very much. Very, very thank you for taking the time to watch the video. Extra thank you in case you stick around until the end. You are free to like and subscribe so you can stay tuned to see more upcoming videos for World War Z Aftermath and other video games. And as always, I wish you all a wonderful day. Oh,